Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carla Malazowski, and I'm an instructional specialist in the Division of Consortia Choice and Application Program Services. It's my honor and privilege to be with you um, this evening to discuss middle school magnet options. I'm very fortunate to be here today with a whole team of people. First, I really want to acknowledge ITV. They're here um, videotaping this event so that you don't need to videotape it on your own and providing a, not only a live feed for families at home, but a video recording that um, will be available for viewing on the Montgomery County website should you wish to view this again or look at any portion or confer with another family member. I also want to thank the members of my team who were welcoming you here this evening for coming out, as well as our coordinators from our magnet programs that we'll be presenting this evening. And of course, a huge thank you to John F. Kennedy High School for being our host and their staff for being so welcoming this evening. So our focus tonight is we're gonna be talking about middle school magnets. Um, and we're gonna talk about, our main focus is gonna be acceleration and enrichment and where that occurs. We're gonna talk about admissions, and then we're going to have an opportunity to go through some of the frequently asked questions about these processes. So, where will students access enrichment in middle school? And most students will access enrichment in middle school at your local middle school. I really urge you to check out your local middle school. They have tremendous offerings at every single Montgomery County middle school. There's also opportunities for um, acceleration and enrichment in the Middle School Magnet Consortium. And if you have questions about the Middle School Magnet Consortium, we had an event like this one. It was videotaped and it is on the Montgomery County website at the MSMC part of the Montgomery County Public Schools website. And we have Selective Magnet, which is the focus of our presentation here with you this evening. So what does acceleration and enrichment look like in middle school? What does it consist of? Acceleration and enrichment in middle school includes math, which is programmed for at the level where the child needs it, which could include high school courses in the middle school. World languages, regardless of level, all world language classes are high school credit courses. And each middle school offers a wealth of different electives and many elective courses will offer high school credit. That will depend school to school and each school would be able to inform you about what it is that they offer in this area. And how are students considered for acceleration and enrichment? So there's a number of ways. Um, first of all, by now you should have received a letter from um, a central review process that has occurred, letting you know some preliminary ideas from a central screening that occurred, and we use various data points for enrichment and acceleration. And as your child is preparing to move to middle school, we rely on your sending elementary school to um, make recommendations about the courses in which your child will be successful in middle school and to partner with you um, to help ensure success for students. So I mentioned briefly, and this is um, a really quick overview, we have the Middle School Magnet Consortium, which consists of Argyle, um, which is a school for di with digital design and um, development, A. Mario Leuterman, which is a creative and performing arts, and Parkland, which is an aerospace technology. Um, the MSMC is um, entering into these programs is a lottery process. Families that reside within the MSMC areas um, get choice information, usually from the counselor at their elementary school, supported by our office. If you live outside of the boundaries for the Middle School Magnet Consortium, you can still apply to one of these great schools. The application for this is online on the MSMC webpage. There's a link to apply. The secret to the magic link is that your child must be signed in to his or her Montgomery County email address for the link to open. And our office is supporting private school families that have an interest in applying to these programs. And um, we also have these, the MSMC, just like I mentioned earlier, has 
high school level math classes, foreign language, and they have electives in particular in their themed areas for high school credit. And students will be considered um, for acceleration and enrichment in the MSNC schools using various data points, including um, parent input, teacher recommendations, and any of the data that we have available for your student. And today our main focus is on selective magnet programs. And our main focus today is on the southern part of the county. We have a humanities and communication um, middle school magnet program. We have two. We have um, Dr. Martin Luther King Middle School, which um, serves the northern part of the county. And we focused on them earlier this month in a presentation. And today, we'll be hearing from Mr. Kerwin from Eastern Middle School that services the southern part of the county, which will be our focus today. And for math, science, computer science, serving the northern part of the county, we have Roberto Clemente Middle School, which again, we presented about earlier this month. And today, we have Mr. DeGaspers here with us from Tacoma Park, who will be talking about the program there. Whether you attend the northern or the southern part of the county program is determined by your home address. So um, depends on where you live, whether you would be eligible for Eastern and Tacoma or Clemente and King. It's not a request, it's based on address. Um, these programs have a focus in their particular magnet area and additionally, like other middle schools, they offer high school credit in math, um, not just in the math program, but also in the humanities program. They offer world languages and various electives. And each of the schools has three classes that are focused on the magnet theme, which the coordinators will be talking to you about so you can learn more about their course offerings. Entry to this program is through a selections committee, which considers multiple measures. That means various data points that we have for the children. And it includes an above level assessment. And a common confusion, ooh, there's no longer an application for this process. You should have received a letter at home letting you know whether your local elementary school is going to be testing your child with an opportunity to opt out of testing if you're not interested in the testing and an opportunity to opt into testing if you have not been invited to test. Students will test at the elementary school that they currently attend during the school date and the letter that you should have received will give the date. If your school needs to change the date for any reason, the school will be notifying families of any change of date. Okay. So all of our middle schools have the same basic structure. Um, each middle school has an opportunity to have either a seventh or eighth period day um, to offer the courses that they offer. Again, they offer high school credit um, in math, world language, and other electives. And the student schedule is comprised of core subjects. So that's your English, your science, your social studies, your math, those are the core subjects, and physical education. And then students also have additional courses like music, technology, and other offerings which they can elect to take. I think something that's exciting for many students is the opportunity to have PE every day, or in the case of block scheduling, every other day instead of just once a week, like we do in elementary school. And elective offerings vary from school to school. Um, every middle school offers a wide range of electives, and every school has slightly different offerings. I very much encourage you to check out what your local middle school has to offer in terms of electives. Okay. So for who are these um, middle school magnet programs designed? And they're really designed thinking about students that don't have a peer group. And that's a big shift from elementary school to middle school. Because in elementary school, we have small schools with small numbers of students. And in middle schools, the class size, the group, when I say class, I don't mean the individual who's sitting in the classroom. The sixth grade class is a much larger class. So there's much more of an opportunity for children to have peers um, throughout different subjects. So these programs are really designed for children that don't have peer groups, who love learning and love school and have an interest in one of the themed areas, students who like to solve problems and who um, are creative problem solvers and who really thrive um, in educational environments as in enthusiasm, like they have a passion for those programs. Ooh, okay. 
Okay, so both programs are located in the Silver Spring Tacoma Park area. Each program has 100 seats for out of area students and it serves 16 high school clusters, so the southernmost part of the county. Each, prog each program has a magnet theme that drives the program offerings. And the admissions process is selective and it considers the student's academic profile as well as academic need. Students in the program are scheduled for three magnet classes as a part of the magnet and then the other courses outside of the magnet offerings are scheduled with the other students that attend the school. So um, first we're gonna learn about Eastern Middle School and the Humanities Communication Program there. Mr. Kerwin is here, he's the coordinator of Eastern Middle School to talk to you about what Eastern offers. So good evening, my name is Matthew Kerwin. I have the honor of being the Magnet Coordinator at Eastern Middle School. Eastern's Humanities Program uh, works to serve highly able students who have a particular interest in the arts. These are students who often love to write, maybe they are vivacious readers, they perhaps love history or enjoy exploring current events. And uh, we work to, to satisfy those needs through a particular schedule. Eastern does have a traditional seven period schedule. Within that, we're gonna offer three unique magnet classes. Those consist of the Humanities English class, the Humanities World Studies class, and a Humanities Media Production class. The World Studies and the English class follow the general scope and sequence of an advanced English or World Studies class throughout other MCPS schools but they accelerate significantly faster. They are taught two to three years above grade level, and because the pacing is faster, we're able to go into greater depth and offer extension beyond the normal curriculum. The Humanities Media class works to offer students uh, the opportunity to express their learning in more non-traditional ways, uh, beyond the traditional essay or the traditional speech. So, what makes the program unique? Teachers in the Magnet program plan uh, collaboratively in order to develop interdisciplinary projects and inter interdisciplinary themes. Additionally, we, uh, we schedule the students in cohort groups. Um, these cohort groups allow the students to travel through the Magnet classes together. The physical design of the building places our English class and World Studies class next to each other. The, the doors open, and this allows us to offer co-taught classes. It allows us to offer seminars at either 90 minutes or 45 minutes. It allows us to schedule, or 
group students for collaborative projects in one class and then have them carry that project throughout the day. So in terms of the planning, as students are learning about a historical time period in the World Studies class, perhaps it's ancient Greece, they are reading about that same time period through the English class. They're reading Greek myths. And then when they go to the media production class, they are presenting that learning. Rather than just writing an essay, maybe they're creating an animated film. So they're, these themes weave through all three classes. It creates greater understanding. It allows the students to go into greater depth in the topics. Additionally, students are going to read text and literature two to four years above grade level. And oftentimes, one of the, the focuses that, or the, one of the ways I describe it for parents is by the time your child graduates, they're going to be a documentary filmmaker. Um, we really work on creating documentary film. We work on writing expository essay. So with that, we are, we're looking at film composition. We're working on film editing. We're using industry standard equipment, such as Final Cut Pro. Students are working on interview skills, not only the question asking of an interview, but how to reach out and schedule that interview, how to, where to schedule the interview, how to set it up for sound and visual quality. They're learning research skills through professional libraries, and then we work on thesis development and writing skills. Students also take those skills and do apply them in competitions, such as the uh, National History Day competition and stu uh, C-SPAN student camp competition. If you're interested in seeing student work from the past, going to C-SPAN's website. Uh, our films are still on that website from previous years, but you can see the work that our students are doing there. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. DeGasparis from Tacoma Park. Hello, and I'm Scott DeGasper. I'm the Magna Coordinator at Tacoma Park Middle School. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, our school, what makes our program unique, and how it's structured, and uh, what to expect if you end up being invited and in coming to Tacoma. So we, um, the structure of our school is we have an eight-period day, and we do a block schedule where we have odd days, even days. So the students have eight periods in their schedule. They only see four classes a day for 90 minutes each. And out of those eight periods, uh, three of the classes are magnet program classes with only students invited to the program. And that, of course, is math, science, and computer science are the three topics. And then all their other classes they take with uh, other students at the school, English, um, history, electives. We have an elaborate elective, arts elective program. Our community in Tacoma Park is um, uh, uh, very appreciative of the arts. And so we've responded to that by creating a diverse um, set of arts electives. We have both in instrumental, 
uh, orchestral and choral music uh, courses kids can take. We also have semester electives in uh, general music, theater, TV studio production, uh, family consumer sciences, which is cooking and sewing, um, visual art, and then we also have a creative writing class kids can take in seventh and eighth grade. And this year we've actually uh, started by offering a student leadership course uh, that kids can take in seventh and eighth grade to develop uh, a leadership program for, for our students. So we have a lot going on at Tacoma. It's a real exciting place. But you guys came here to learn about the magnet program. So let's talk about our, um, our magnet program courses. So the, really the cornerstone of our program is really our mathematics. Students are working at least two years above grade level, and really the, you know, what our program is really about is identifying prodigious math students that are, that are really working at a high level and able to learn math quickly. We go at a rapid pace. So the first thing that you, well, what I will say is our, all of our courses, Magnet Investigations and Mathematics, Magnet Algebra One, Magnet Geometry, they're based on the county curriculum, but what, they do, what we do with it, we cover all the topics in the county curriculum, but we compact that because we can go faster and we can accelerate, kids learn it faster, and then that makes room for more extended study and greater depth in those topics. So we do um, topics that aren't part of the tra traditional curriculum anymore, like set theory and group theory in Algebra One. We also drop some of the Algebra One topics down into magnet investigations and mathematics to create room in Algebra for these more enriched topics. We, we do uh, formal logic, a unit in formal logic, and a unit in geometry and art in, in eighth grade, again, as points of acceleration and going into greater, greater depth. So all of our courses cover all the content, but cover more content and do it faster. That's the, the key takeaway message on that. Now in science, <coughs> it's a similar thing. Our, our courses uh, extend and accelerate the MCPS science curriculum. We sometimes rearrange the units a little bit, like uh, chemistry is a unit in se seventh grade, but we teach it in sixth grade. <coughs> we not only teach um, the inorganic chemistry, that's the basic part of middle school chemistry, but we also then extend that and go into the biochemistry of nutrition, and kids study about lipids and carbohydrates and, and enzymes and you know, learn about the biochemistry of their body and how that works, and that's a topic that's not part of Middle school, um, middle school curriculum. Similarly, in seventh grade, because we can go through content faster and more accelerated, it creates room for special topics. And one really popular special topic unit they do towards the end of the year is they do a forensic science unit, kind of like CSI at Tacoma Park. And they set up, um, the teacher sets up a crime scene and the kids have to, you know, it's got blood stains and fingerprints and they have to like collect samples and collect fingerprints. And, and then they has, um, that's in seventh grade, so what, previous students in eighth grade know the routine and they all play character roles and the kids have to go and interview them as suspects and collect data and things. One year he actually, we have a small outdoor classroom space and one year he set up the crime scene outside and a, a community member walked in their dog, called the police. They saw this blood and like torn clothes and you know, like it was a crime scene. It was, I guess it was convincing. So now we keep it inside. So that works a little better. We also, um, we also expect all of our magnet students to do a uh, science project, an experimental research science project each year. We have a big science uh, STEM night, we call it, like a science fair um, at the end of the year, which is really a great uh, community celebration of science. You're welcome to come and, and, and visit, enjoy it. It's a community event. So that's another unique thing um, that our students get, is they get three years of experimental science that they're expected to do, and they do a year-long project. Some of them work, to, some of them work with uh, mentors, actually, um, in, in labs that they, that they make arrangements. In, in particular, our eighth grade, we, um, we have a network of scientists that they reach out to connect with um, and get mentorship where they can get either advice or actually work with a scientist to do an experiment. We have a lot of our kids go to um, the county science fair. We send a lot of kids to this county science competition, and they do, uh, they do really well well there. The other thing I'll also point out in terms of uh, what we do is, is, as they said at Eastern, we try to integrate um, our curriculum with math, science, and computer science. So, you know, when students are learning about 
uh, linear equations in Algebra 1, they're writing programs in computer science to graph linear equations, right? When, you know, the mathematics that they learn in, in math class, they're using as part of their science project to do statistical regression, statistical analysis on the data they've collected. So we really try to show students how, you know, math and science and computer science can work together to really do um, amazing things. There we go. And computer science. So uh, the Magnet Program is the only middle school where you can get uh, three years of computer programming experience. We start in sixth grade. Um, so there's no like analog um, in, in other middle schools that we would model our curriculum after. So it is kind of unique. We, in, in sixth grade, they learn about hardware, they learn about computer networks, they learn about cybersecurity, and then they get into Python programming and they start with the basics of, of programming uh, right off in sixth grade. They continue with that in seventh grade. Seventh grade is a big year for Python programming. They really plow through that, learn a lot of programming skills. They also do some app development with um, Android apps, uh, which the kids get a big kick out of. That's a lot of fun. They do a little bit of, uh, start to do a little bit of web design, um, HTML and web design. And then in eighth grade, they continue on with uh, uh, Python programming, and then they get into um, web programming and take their web design to the next level, learning JavaScript and, and, web, and web programming in eighth grade. We also participate in a lot of contests at, at Tacoma. That's a point of enrichment as well. We do the American Sci Computer Science League as part of a, you know, we have a team that goes to competition, but we do it also in class as a, as a, a classroom instructional uh, process. We do a lot of math contests. We just did uh, the University of Maryland High School math contest yesterday. We do um, lots of math contests through the course of the year, and we also participate in Science Bowl, which is a competitive uh, science competition. So those are the kind of things that we bring, again, to enrich beyond just the basic, uh, the basic framework of the MCPS curriculum. And that is my story for Tacoma Park. So I really want to thank um, Mr. Kerwin and Mr. DeGaspers for coming out this evening. The gentlemen will be here at the end to continue um, and help answer any questions we have, but if we could give them a nice round of applause for their... <laughs> so we're going to transition a little bit to the question, um, to the frequently asked questions to try and answer some of your questions. Um, one of our focuses with, um, we've recently changed the middle school magnet process. Our focus is making sure that families have access to the programs that we offer in the school system. And one of the things that we have done to increase access is we have eliminated the application. Again, I said that earlier today that we, um, there's no longer an application if you're interested in your child attending Eastern or Tacoma. You've received a letter letting you know um, when your child has the opportunity to test as one of the things that it's considered at your, at your elementary school during the student day. And in addition to the offerings at our magnet middle schools, we have expanded our offerings at all local middle schools. And we have um, new courses. Um, we have had advanced math and we have continued to expand our advanced math offerings. And in addition, our middle schools are now offering historical inquiries into global humanities as a course. Oh, and it didn't advance. Okay. So again, the application is no longer required. Um, private school students do need to apply because when you apply as a private or homeschool family, it's how we know that you're interested in either returning or accessing the public school. So private and homeschool families do need to apply. Um, all fifth grade students are centrally reviewed. All fifth grade students in MCPS are considered for everything that we have to offer. And testing will be, take place at your current middle, at your current elementary school. A lot of parents say, my child attends a school that's not our neighborhood school. Your child will test at the school that they are attending. So we say local school, meaning the school where the child um, is attending, and you should have received this screening letter. If you did not receive a letter, um, the school should know whether or not your child has been flagged for testing, and you can go ahead and check with the school um, with respect to that.
So at the beginning of the school year, central office did a review of all of the data points that we have available for students, and that's how the central review was um, conducted, um, looking at what we have and thinking about um, what would best suit the needs of your child based on the data points that we already have available, and those, um, the letters that you received at home are based on that information that we already have for your child. The next step is how are, how are students selected for each of the magnet programs? There is a committee comprised of central office employees. The committee reviews the students that are under consideration um, for Eastern and Tacoma as well as Clemente and King. The application process, the consideration process is name, race, and school blind. So um, there's someone facilitating who has removed all the children's names and all that the committee members are able to view are data points available for the students, which include grades, park scores, map scores, and the result of the COGAT assessment that is taken at the school in November. And the process is very competitive. There are 100 seats available um, for 16 high school clusters, so we're really, um, each grade level in Montgomery County has approximately 12,000 students. So the current fifth grade has approximately that many students. And again, we have the northern magnets that serve the northern part of the county, but um, we do have a limited number of seats with 100 seats available at each of these programs. Because our local schools have so many tremendous offerings that can meet the advanced needs of students locally. So some of the frequently asked questions are, are is transportation provided? Transportation is provided for Eastern and Tacoma. They are, it's provided from what's called a central stop. So if you're accustomed to your child taking a bus to school now, bus stops are every three or four blocks. If you ever get stuck behind a school bus, you're, you're frequently stopping, right, on, on one-way roads, single-lane roads. Um, these, these stops may be further from your home. So in the morning, instead of walking to a bus stop with your family, you may need to drive to a central stop that's two or three miles away from your home, but that's not the full distance to the school. So we have um, the, the stops. Parents are responsible for arranging transportation to and from the central stops. And bus rides can be long. They vary by location. Obviously, if you live near the school, you're going to have a shorter bus ride than a family that lives further away from the school. Um, if you want to get an idea of how long the bus rides are, if you go to the webpage for each of the schools, the current bus routes are posted. They shift a little bit every year, right, because we want to make sure that we're serving the community and where we have critical mass of students, we do move bus stops. But to have a general idea of what a magnet bus stop magnet bus ride looks like, that information is currently available on the website. Okay, so what is the timeline? We're currently in October. We've had our parent information nights. We're so fortunate to have family members here with their students. Um, and you have received your central screening letter. The students will be testing in November at, at the school. Schools do makeup testing. If your child is sick on the day of testing, please don't send a sick child to school. The school will support you and make arrangements for a makeup test. Our selections committees meet in December and parents are notified of the results in January. And along with the notification, each school has an open house for invited parents. So since you're not applying, it gives you an opportunity to learn more about the program. And um, if you're not interested in the program for which you're invited, you can say no. It's not a binding process. Your home school is certainly available to you. So as a parent, what do I do now? Well, first you want to learn about your local middle school. It's, it's a great opportunity. It's a great choice. It's local. It's near your home. Um, and it is the school that you should assume as of today that your child is going to be going to next year. Um, the, the application process is something that takes time. Every family has different needs and um, may be considering different middle school options, but please check out your local middle school. You have an opportunity to um, view the web presentation, just like this presentation was videotaped tonight for people to be able to watch from home or those of you that arrived a little bit late to be able to catch the beginning part of the presentation um, online. Um, we had a presentation for MSMC and there's an opportunity to learn more about those programs. And um, this is our last open house for the selective magnet programs.
Okay. So here is the list of contact information for specific questions about Tacoma Park. Um, you have heard from Mr. DeGasparis. He's also in the hallway available to answer questions. For information about the humanities program at Eastern, you heard from Mr. Kerwin. He's also in the hallway here to answer questions. If you have questions about accelerated and enriched instruction, please reach out to AEI. Um, Ms. Krishana Dean is a supervisor of AEI, but if you call, um, you will be, you could be referred to somebody else on her team to help answer your questions. And if you have questions about the admissions process, it's our office, my team that does that, and my contact information is listed above. If you're gonna take a picture of any one slide, this is the slide you want a picture of with all of the contact information. It is readily available on the Montgomery County website. Again, I wanna thank um, Kennedy High School for hosting us this evening. I would like to thank ITV for helping us make this presentation accessible to families at home and the opportunity for continued viewing. I'd like to thank members of the DC CAPS team for coming out tonight and making this presentation possible. We have sign language interpreters here with us this evening and we had a whole presentation available in Spanish. So it really has been a night of many people coming together um, to provide hopefully you with answers to many of your questions. We will be taking questions in the hallway. So if you exit at the rear doors, um, members of my team, as well as Mr. DeGasparis and Mr. Kerwin are in the hallway and available to answer your questions. Thank you for joining us this evening and I hope you have a great night.